Hey guys and welcome to another free plugin Friday. Hope you're all well, staying safe amidst the pandemonium that is the current state of the world right now. Um, but I've got some good news here as far as keeping yourself busy and that is a great free plugin. Now last week Stephen Slate released the update to his famous drum sample program SSD with the 5.5 update and this brought in a lot of new kits and a lot of great things and with that comes SSD 5.5 free and now this is a completely free plugin comes with an entire kit um, with a few presets as you can see here and kind of doesn't give you any excuse to get great drums. Now, I've never really used the SSD stuff so much. I don't really do a lot of metal or hard rock and it was very catered towards that until SSD 5 and now 5.5 where the kits have gotten a lot better at being kind of more subtle and kind of having a bit more range in what they can do. A uh, little less punchy over processed stuff. Not that they're not punchy, they're definitely so punchy and we'll have a look at that soon. So what do you get with SSD free? Now you get the Deluxe 2 kit. Now this comes with three presets, uh, Dry and Tight, the standard free edition, and Hugo or Hugo. Even Stephen Slate doesn't know what he calls this in his uh, recent video. Uh, but so that is kind of a bigger sounding kit and you've got full functionality, just minimalized kits. So you can still go in and edit. You can do all these things. We'll look at some of these features. Uh, you can mix all your different mics. You can still bring it out to your door, which we will do. You've got maps and you've got a bunch of great grooves. Um, we'll look at them and the standard settings, of course. So let's just get straight into it. Uh, what I'm going to do is load up the, the free edition kit first. Okay, so let's just go through some sounds. I'm just going to just gonna play through just each of the elements. So you've got a pretty good kit here. You've got four toms, snare, kick, a couple of crash singles, splash, china, hi-hat, and cra uh, ride. So really what you would need to write a whole drum track. So first let's start off, that's the kick. Now I'm gonna turn it up for me. Hopefully the level's good for you. So yeah, typical kick sound. Snare, you've got different articulations. Sounds pretty good. You get a low four tom, slightly higher four tom. Splash, that sounds pretty good. Pretty good sounding ride. And see, so you've got plenty of kind of different velocities and a kind of realistic sound, which um, is not what Slate was good for. The symbols on the older Slate SSD4 uh, was a bit upfront and not that natural, whereas this is really natural. That was some pretty sloppy playing on my keyboard, but you get the idea. It is a great sounding kit. And so that's the free edition. Obviously you got the Hugo and Dry and Tight. So what I've done here is I've got some grooves. If you look here, you've got jazz, you've got pop, you've got R&B, and you've got rock. So I've pulled out some of the rock kit. I think it's a rock kit. Uh, so I've just got that looping, just playing some things. And these grooves are really good. They really take advantage of ghost notes and stuff to show you the realism. So what we might do, I'm just going to play it on loop and we'll listen to each of the kits. I'll start with the free edition, we'll go to Dry and Tight and Hugo. And then we'll have a look at mix things and just a few other things. So...
cut that a bit shorter and go back to here. So, like I said, it is quite natural but still punchy. That kick is really great. I really love it. So that was a free addition. Let's go to the dry and tight. Now, this would be good for your disco and stuff. It's kind of, like it says, dry and tight. And I think it uses a slightly different snare and might adjust the mix a little bit. If we have a look here, yeah, you've got a little less room um, and I think a few things with the ADS-R to do that, which we'll look at this section in a second. Uh, so this is the dry and tight. And last, we'll look at the Hugo, um, so or Hugo. Uh, so it kind of has this extra snare, I believe, and is a little bit more big room kind of crack sound. Great for your hard rock and such. So you can hear it's the same kit, but three different kind of presets already straight out of the box, straight into your production. It sounds great. So let's have a look at some of the features, including the edit and mix windows. Um, like I said, it's still a full functioning plugin despite being free. Uh, so you can really kind of get in there and change the sound. So you can mix in your door and we'll go into that in a minute. Uh, that's my preferred method, but if you just want to keep it all within the plugin, you can do that too. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to settings, make it slightly bigger, I think. Um, oh, maybe it's too big. Yeah, you can change the size here, which is great. Um, and while we're in this window, you can change the drum kit detail and the resampling quality. Uh, to save yourself CPU and RAM usage, as well as change the disk streaming. So streaming buffer size is how much you put into RAM before it has to disk stream. Now, I'm just using a Barracuda Pro, so I've got it on big just to save uh, my disk, especially while we're um, recording, because I'm also you know recording video to disk and a few other things. Uh, so just to make sure we don't have dropouts, but if you have an SSD or something, you can reduce this uh, so that you can stream off the disk quicker. Now, let's have a look at... I think we'll go into the mix panel first. The edit is where you can change all the articulations, and it's quite advanced. Uh, so let's go into the mix, because that is the first thing you're going to want to do. So the mix comes up here, uh, and it's basically your standard mixer. So if we just keep playing this loop, I can solo each different thing. We can um, really just start to mix. Now there's no, you can't add any kind of, uh, I mean here it comes out, it does change the articulation, shows you everything. But you can't uh, do any EQ or compression within the program like you can do with BFD or Superior. Um, it's more just levels and panning. 
but you can still adjust what you want. So say you want to dry a sound, bring the room down here, maybe bring this room down. More of the kick in. Already completely different drum sound. Or if you want something way more roomy, take down the direct mics. Bring some of this snare ring in. And then you got a huge roomy kind of mix. Uh, so yeah, it's your basic mixer um, But it's great and you can obviously see you can pan here You can go for some crazy stuff if you kind of want rooms on one side Different room on the other side Whatever you kind of want in there, but like I said the best thing is to route it through your door uh, Which you can do here. So there's writing writing presets or you can just do it manually uh, like mono to mono, stereo to stereo, everything on its own stereo track. It depends what you're using. I'm using Cubase, so everything generally comes on a stereo track out of a plugin. And we will go into that. But let's just have a look at the edit tab. So let's bring the mix back to something a bit more normal. Um, your average kind of mix with plenty of that. Take the ring out. More kick in. So this is your edit tab, and you can go into every single uh, drum piece, kit piece, and basically adjust various things. Uh, so I'm just going to solo the kick. So we'll solo the kick and kick out. So uh, the first thing you've got obviously is volume, tune, and you've got phase. So you can put the phase. Turn the volume down. Maybe you want more kick. And this would control how much kick is also in, say, the overheads and room and everything. This is just your overall volume for that kit piece. Uh, and then you've got tune. So if you want to tune your kit up, or down tune it, great if you're sample matching, um, if you're using it uh, with a live drum kit and you're just adding samples so you can tune it to kind of fit better, great for that. Uh, next, you've got your articulations. Now here, say for the kick, you've got kick and double. And I believe the double comes in when you're doing quick kicks, and that's your standing kick. Now this would increase way more when you've got something like a snare. You've got all these. So if we go listen to the snare, there's a lot of center stuff, but there's also rim shots, side snares, side stick. There's a few snare rolls, uh, rim shot edge just to give you, you know, different articulations. They're all mapped out slightly differently on the keyboard. Um, so you can get a much more realistic drum performance than just a center thing. And as you can hear there, you've got different articulations being played in this loop. And you can adjust the volume of these, obviously. So take the center down. All the center hits are gone and you can hear in this MIDI what is all these other articulations. And you can obviously adjust volume. So say you want your rim shots to be louder, you can turn your rim shots up. If you want your center snare to be louder. Yeah, basically adjust it so that no matter how you program it, your articulations are kind of different. So next is this dynamics. And now this takes into account basically what MIDI you're feeding it and changes it. So you've got dynamics. Now dynamics is the breadth of dynamics. As you turn this down, the difference between loud and soft um, sounds is brought closer together. So basically it triggers samples uh, more consistently rather than using the full breadth of volume in the sample. So if we turn this down, uh, let's just... So well, maybe we'll keep the snares thing. We'll turn the dynamics down. Now you can hear all of it is just one velocity sample there. 
So basically, each of those articulations is still being played, but all at one velocity. And full, you've got the full breadth, so you've got all your ghost notes and everything. Now this would be great, this can be great when you are, let's pause that for a sec. This would be great when you're using it as sample, uh, enhancing other samples or enhancing a live drum kit because you can get a much more solid sound. And we will go into this at the very end. I've got a BFD kit. I'm going to use SSD to kind of add consistency and punch to that kit. And you can adjust the dynamics so you've got a more solid sound. Uh, next, you've got range, uh, range minimum uh, and max. So basically, this is what is triggered. So... You can ignore all the velocities above 26, maybe. So a similar dynamics, but gives you a different control because it changes what range you're accepting the MIDI in. And of course, there is velocity, which is just the overall velocity. Turn it up. You've got this velocity curve. Or you can make it bit subtler there with that velocity curve. Uh, this really depends. This is great to use on cymbals and stuff. So if we go say to the ride, let's just listen to the ride. You can give it a bit more velocity range. Uh, we'll go back to the section of just ride. So that the softer bits are a bit softer. You kind of got, yeah, a, a kind of broader Velocity, so it's a bit more subtle or go the other way and you have a lot more um, kind of more of the tr it triggers more of the louder velocities or yeah if that makes sense so it's probably not the best explanation but basically it controls how the MIDI velocity triggers the velocity samples and so the last thing here is basically the microphone and the ADSR. So the microphone is similar to the articulations, but instead of the different hits, it is which uh, mic channels they are. So all of the hits here have multiple mics. So we go to the kick, for example, you've got the kick in and out, as you would on a normal kick. Then you've got the overhead, the room, room B, and the SLR. And this is where you can adjust the volume for each individual kit piece. So say, for example, with your rooms, you only wanted kick and snare in room B. You just wanted to control room B without all the cymbal wash, something that you can't do with a real live drum kit unless you play parts separately, which was done on a few records in the 80s and 90s. But basically, yeah, you can really control that. Or say you think that the kick is a bit too boomy with the room up, you can bring that back down. So we can try that now. So say we keep the rooms here um, and then I go to hi-hat and I turn off room B and I go to ride and I turn off room B and basically then we can play that. If I go to, uh, I think I have to go to edit here and go to crash, turn off room B. This is probably easy to do with this menu here because obviously you get to choose all of them. So now we're going to play and what we'll do is we'll just solo room B. So now if you just want to add that room in there. And maybe that's a bit too much on the kick. So just adjust it down a little bit. So now we've got a really tight sound with still some room on the toms and snares. But the cymbals aren't so washy like they are, say, in this room. Now if we want the washy, washy kind of cymbals in the room, then you use that room, and then here you can do the tight stuff. And of course you can adjust that all over whatever you want to do. But basically, that gives you this insane amount of control that you can't really do in real life uh, to really get the drum sound you want. And it really gets around 
problems that you'd have with a kit sounding the same as other people's kits. Because of course, every time you mic a kit, it's going to be slightly different. And so when you're recording a kit, every single recording session has its own little flavor. And you can use these controls to kind of mimic that. So say you want, you would normally set up the mics that get less hi-hat bleed in, you know, the snare, or you'd get you know, more close mic hi-hat and less in the overheads, or maybe you over, your overheads are set up so you get mainly cymbals, or maybe your overheads are set up so you get way more toms. Now, you can adjust all this to get that overheads to sound like what you do if you had different mic techniques to in order to get that. Now, obviously, the tone wouldn't change as much as you would with those various mic techniques, but it's great of really controlling what you want to do. And then last is ADSR. And now this basically is an envelope for that sound. So say we go back to the kick. So we've got the kick here. Now what we can do is control how tight that kick is. Now these are each for each of the mics. So if we go kick in here, obviously, or we can link it. Now link applies it to all the mics. So now we've got it in all the mics, you've got that, well, it sounds awful, but. And you can use these controls to control volume two. So say you wanted the sustain to go down a bit, if you still wanted something, yep. So this is kind of like a gate except it is triggered by the MIDI rather than by audio. So you've got way more control. So say you want to get snare ring out. So let's move on to the snare. And say you want to apply it to all of them. So you basically got a tighter snare there, turn it off. But maybe you want the room to have a little bit more. Uh, so if you turn on links. See, okay. So I'm pretty new to this plugin. That's the thing I didn't realize, but if you have the link on that does it to all of them, if you turn it off, it resets the rest to normal. So you can then adjust it, obviously, so that so the bottom has more ring. Um, but So link on would control all the mics, uh, and then otherwise you have to individually do it. So say you wanted your top microphones, like your close mics, like the snare top and bottom, to be a lot tighter, but you want your rooms to have the full sustain of the snare, you can do that. But we'll leave link on for the moment. So we listen to the whole kit. So it's already a bit tighter on the snare, turn it off. And you can really use this to control every single drum piece to kind of get the tightness if you want. So it's kind of like you can basically add muffling and things you would when you record, but after the fact. And you wouldn't have to use gates on each channel because obviously gates, say for example, on your um, room mics aren't going to really just trigger from the snare unless you use a side chain and then you get very, very easy to get bad sounding uh, sounds basically because you're cutting out cymbals or whatever because a room mic was only a stereo channel. But with this, because each individual sample has its own send to that room, you can really, really control it. Uh, so we won't go into that too much more, but basically that's how you get drier sounds or bigger sounds or whatever uh, you need. So we're going to pause that, and what we're going to do now is run it in Cubase. So I'm going to go everything on its own stereo. And see what this has done is sent the kick out here, the snares out here, uh, 
as you can see down here, all these outputs and run them all to different channels. And what this means is then I can control it in Cubase. So if I pull my mixer up and bring it across, I've got all the different outputs here and I can mix them in Cubase. So what I've done, just to show you how good this kit sounds, so I'm going to turn the ADSR off and I'm just going to bring these all back up to close to zero. I'm going to keep this room B like it is and bring that, maybe cut these rooms down a bit. Uh, now I can do that in Cubase 2, as you can see, uh, I'll bring that mixer window back. Um, I could, you know, use my faders to do that. Um, but we're going to keep it here because this is probably how I would record it, say. So I'm going to play this and then all I've done is just add one instance of VMR to the drum bus. I've created a drum bus and added reverb to the snare and toms and stuff. And you can see how quickly and easily this just mix as well. So this is just, just kick straight up. Sounds great. Now if I just add VMR, which I did. Possibly a little bit too much high in there. Bring that back a bit. And then I just added reverb, like I said, to certain elements. So if I unmute the reverb. And straight away, that is a usable, punchy, bloody awesome drum sound. And I'd be happy to put that in a production. And that took me very little effort. You know, and I haven't even gone into EQing everything, compressing everything, just straight away sounds great. And that is what is so good about this plugin. So last thing I wanted to look at is using it to add to existing drums. Now this is what Slate has been used for by a lot of people because it's punchy and it kind of can get aggressive. And while these are more natural sounding kits, they have that mix ready punchy sound that you can add to another kit to give consistency and just a little bit more punch. So I'm gonna open up another project and I'll show you with that. Okay, so now I've pulled up this project here and basically there's this kind of drum bit, it's all BFD drums, it's not really mixed yet. Uh, and there is a realness to the drums, there's this velocity kind of randomization and stuff, but it means that the kick and snare aren't that consistent. Uh, so we're just going to play it, I'll play just the drums and then with the guitars and a little bit of uh, vocal. Uh, it isn't finished, there isn't any bass yet, but basically what I wanted to do is add SSD in here to give a nice consistent uh, kind of kick and snare sound. So here's just the drums as they are. And we'll do it with the uh, guitars and a bit of vocals. Okay, so like I said, I wanted to add SSD in there. So what I've done is I've just loaded up a kick and a snare. And what we're going to do is make some adjustments uh, so to get a really consistent thing. So this is how it is. Now I've busted out. So we've got the kick going to one 
uh, snare going to two and all of the ambient channels going to three just so we can control the amount of ambience we're getting uh, as you can hear it's already quite a roomy drum sound I've got with BFD so I kind of don't need as much roomy smack in there so we can turn that down in the door at the moment I've got them all at the same level uh, but we'll go through it so if we just solo what we've got so far it's just SSD this is what SSD is doing Now what we can do with the mix is probably just turn it all up a little bit. Now I've got it on rim shot mode as well. So I just turn that up there in uh, Cubase. Uh, it seems that PFD is a little bit louder than it. SSD. So, pause that. You can hear already that's a bit punchy. I'm going to just turn the rooms down a bit. Pretty punchy, but you're still getting a bit of variation. So what I'm going to do is turn the dynamics all the, all the way down to about 50 for both the kick and the snare. So we're even more consistent. So we've still got a bit of realism there, um, but it is fairly consistent, especially compared to the original. So let's blend that in. So we're gonna go, here's the BFD drums, and what I'll do is I'll bring in the SSD with it. And I'm going to start it again, and this is with the SSD. Bring the kick back a little bit. I might just tighten up this a little bit. Now we can adjust the face to see if that is a problem. I think the face is actually pretty good. Might just just listen to the kick. I'm going to solo both the kicks. So we've got a bit of flaming going on there, so you kind of just have to make sure you don't have that. Um, you can adjust with maybe with the attack. Other thing you can do is just adjust the... Uh, Now, I do have a bit of randomization on here, which I can turn off. Uh, so I might just turn that off. Now, what I'd normally do is have it all in one and I have a complex uh, drum map, which you can do in Cubase, but you can't do this in all doors. So I'm going to show it like this because this is generally what you can do. So now I've taken the randomization off on the BFD. Obviously, you're getting them to hit better at the same time. So again, if we turn off the uh, SSD one, this is only the close mics. So it's a lot punchier kick than the close mics on the other one. So let's just unsolo all the drums and SSD. And 
I can tighten the snare a little bit, which I think I will do. Again, let's just turn off SSD. And then let's listen to all the all the way with all the other elements. So no SSD. And we'll add SSD. Okay, so let's listen to it all together. No SSD. And I'll turn it on. I'm probably having it too loud here, but I just really want to show what it can do. And of course, you can go in and tune everything. So say you want to do some tom replacement, um, tuning your toms, because tom, toms kind of have quite an obvious note to them often. Uh, tune the toms to match your toms you've got in your real kit or your other sample packs, obviously. Uh, and then tune your snare, tune your kick, affect the ADSR, and then this is unmixed. And then once you go into EQing and stuff, you get them to real sit really well. But this is such a great use for this free plugin. If you're thinking, well, I've got BFD or I've got Superior Drummer, why would I need another drum plugin? Just to do this, just to give you another punchy flavor that you might not have, just a different mic technique, something you don't have in your current libraries, this is great for that. And you don't need a super realistic kit, even though this one can be quite realistic, uh, to add that extra flavor to your productions. So thanks again for watching. This has been a bit of a long one. Uh, so that's SSD Five free. I'm still getting to know some of the features as I'm not an SSD user. But this plugin has actually made me want to buy 5.5 despite having BFD. Uh, maybe for, for more metal and rock stuff, uh, for, for demos where I don't want to spend as much time with BFD, you have to spend a lot of time messing with things and EQing. And for the kicks, the BFD kicks, I don't really like them that much. And this kick is just one of the many in SSD. And from the demos I've heard, it's a lot of good kicks. And I know the full version of SSD comes with some one-shot samples that uh, Slate originally had on CD back in the day that basically got in the career he has now in sample replacement and all this stuff. Those original samples. So... Check out SSD free, uh, get amongst it, have a look, download it. There's no reason not to unless you have no hard drive space, but it only takes up a couple of gigs, so just go for it. And I'll, what I want to do is, considering how everyone is stuck at home, a lot of people, especially in the music industry, a lot of people lost their jobs or they just don't have any work at the moment. So I'm going to get a bunch of free plugins, including this one, and just write some songs. So if you're interested in that, don't forget to like and subscribe. Always comment below with any free plugins or free samples or anything you want me to try out, and I'll stick them in. I'm going to try and do these every Friday because I'm stuck at home a lot right now. So I have plenty of time to look at free plugins. But like I said, yeah, going to do one with multiple instruments that are free. And just show you what you can create for free nowadays. And you can actually get some real quality stuff. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.